Welcome, everybody. Pastor Justin and Ed are on vacation. So I'll be substitute hitting today. Uh, so we just celebrated Independence Day, 4th of July. I want to recognize everyone. Aren't you thankful for the freedom that we live in in America, that we're free? We gather today because of that freedom. So I want to recognize everybody that uh, if you've ever served in the branch of the military, please stand this morning. Let us, any branch of the military, let us recognize you this morning. Thank you. Thank you for your service. And also, uh, just yesterday, we had uh, a, a team of people that were out at the park ministering, and over, I believe it was 291 families, 291 families were ministered to yesterday, 50 salvations, uh, others that were delivered of different things. If you were part of that team yesterday that went out to the park, would you please stand? I want to recognize you. Thank you. Amen. You may be seated. And that's what Brother Joe's talking about is that's part of Brother Jerry's vision. Brother Jerry never wanted a church that didn't go outside of the walls of the church. He wanted it. He's part, part of his vision was to evangelize, not only here locally, but all over the world. And we are going to continue to do that in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen. So it's important that each of us step into that and step up, step in and step up into what God's called us to do. And I want to start today with five things that can be the foundation of your faith for fulfilling God's plan in your life. And if you ever get where you feel like you, you're, you're at a place of standstill or you're, you, you want some kind of purpose, you don't have to read a book on it. You can just acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. Amen? Amen. So these five things will be the foundation of what you can go uh, put your faith on. Number one, God is good. Amen. Anytime you come up to a situation, you've got to realize, number one, God is good. He doesn't do bad things to people. He's good. He doesn't have sickness. He has healing. He's good. Number two, God is love. He doesn't just have love. He is love. Number three, God is faithful. He is faithful to do what he promised. Number four, God is with you. You can write God is with me. Make it personal. And number five, God is always greater. Greater is he that's in who? Me than he that's in the world. So say those with me. God is good. God is love. God is faithful. God is with me. And God is, God is always greater. So anytime you come up to a circumstance that seems like an impossible situation, you remember these five things or remember one of them or three of them or two of them. But as you do, it will build your faith to remember the fact, hey, God said in his word that by his stripes I am healed. And even though I'm still experiencing this pain, I'm going to remember that God is faithful to his word because he's a good God. He has healing and he is with me and he is greater than anything that Satan would try to put on me. And so the basis of those simple things that are the foundation of what should be every believer's faith, therefore I can trust the plan that God has for my life. I can trust the plan that God has for my life. Would you turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2 this morning? Ephesians chapter 2. We'll begin in verse 1. And you... He made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sin, in which you once walked according to the course of, the, of this world. You once walked. This is past tense. If you're born again, we're talking about past tense. This is where you were. This is what you came out of. These, these weren't the good old days. 
This was the dark days that God called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. You once walked according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom all also we were all once conducted our lives in the lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. But God, say but God, God. who is rich in mercy. He is rich in mercy. I'm thankful that he is rich in mercy. I'm thankful that every day that I awake, that his mercies are new for me every single day. I'm thankful that I can go boldly to the throne of grace to obtain help and find grace to help me every single day. I'm thankful for that. Is anybody else thankful for that? Because of his great love, which he loved us, God is love. Even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you've been saved and raised us up together. We're still talking past tense. We're talking everything that God has done for us. We need to sometimes go back and remember those things and be thankful for them. Amen. He raised us up together, made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come. So now we've switched here. We've been talking about how we were dead in trespasses, how God in his great love was rich to us in mercy, that he saved us by grace. But now it's saying that in the ages to come. Now, sometimes when we study the Bible and it talks about the ages to come, many people think it refers to heaven. But this is not referring to heaven. It's referring to the age that we live in right now. The ages to come. Everybody say now. Now. We're living in that age that this verse is talking about now. That in the ages to come. He might show the exceeding riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. See, when you got born again, salvation and forgiveness of sins or sin was just the beginning. And Jesus said, I am the way, come on, the truth and the life. He also said in one uh, part, I am the door. And so we know that we enter into the kingdom of God through Jesus. John 3, 16, for God, come on, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now that everlasting life doesn't begin when you get to heaven. It begins the moment that you confess the Lord, that you believe on the Lord Jesus and you become what, we, what Jesus referred to as being born again. Jesus said, you must be born again. The man said, well, how can a man be born twice? He said, you're born of water, meaning there's a natural birth, and then you're born of the Spirit, meaning there's a spirit birth. And that's what Ephesians 2 is talking about, how he made us, brought us from death to life. Now, Pastor Phil, would you put that down here and come up and help me and, and uh, Brother Joe? Now, y'all turn and face each other and do your hands like this. So Jesus is the door. So behind this door was darkness. It's the darkness that we lived in before we became born again. We believed on Jesus. And there were things that we got into like the sons of disobedience that it talked about. And there there was a time where we might have thought we were living the good life, but there was a better life that that is shown by the gospel of Jesus Christ in that God is good, God is love, God is greater, God is with us, and that, that he wants the best life for us. So when I receive Jesus. I, Jesus is the way, so I receive Jesus. I walk through the door. I come out of darkness, and when I walk through that door, I come into the light, the marvelous light. But that's just the beginning. It's not just so 
I can go to the Lord and say, please forgive me of my sins. No, oh, oh, there is so much that is shown now in the light that I didn't see in the darkness. I didn't know God had all the goodness that God had for me until I walked through the door and then a preacher began to tell me God is good, that God loves me, that God is faithful, that God is kind, that he favors me, that he's greater and that he wants a good, that he's got a good plan for my life. Jeremiah 29, 11 says in the M5, plans of good and not of evil to give me a future and a hope. Now, if, if someone hasn't gone through this door yet, the only hope for them without Jesus is the fact that they're still alive on the earth because they can still receive Jesus. Hell is the absence of everything that is good in God. It's the complete absence of everything that is good in God. So when I walk through the door, through Jesus, I come into the light. And then I find out that God's got a plan for me. Like God's got a plan for my life. That I don't have to live depressed, sick, broke, oppressed. That I don't have to be down in the dumps. That I, that, that I can walk in healing. That I, can, that I can experience all the good things that God... And one day I'm going to go to heaven and spend eternity walking streets of gold and, and seeing colors and, and jewels that, that we can't even imagine. We reconnect with our loved ones. Thank you, guys. We reconnect with our loved ones. We, we eat at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Come on. And I don't know about you, but in front of me is going to be chips and salsa. <laughs> uh, somebody, somebody told me today that, uh, that, you know, I needed to hurry today because they were going out for chicken. <laughs> so that's going to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb, too. I'm going to have me some chicken. I know DeBoer is going to have some chicken. Fried chicken. Fried chicken. They do it upright in heaven. We're going to, you know, we used to sing songs about heaven to point God's saints to where we're headed. But God's life doesn't just begin in heaven. It begins now in the earth. And that's what he wants to show us today, that in the ages to come, we're living now in the ages to come. He might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. Now, I studied this word out, he might show, and I'm going to show it to you on the screen so that you can read along with me the, the, uh, what that means. He might show. The definition means to indicate or to prove properly to make fully evident showing conspicuous proof which demonstrates something as undeniable. That he might show. Inconspicuous or, uncons or conspicuous proof, I'm sorry, conspicuous proof which de demonstrates it as being undeniable. It goes on to say an abiding condition. So it's not just one time. It's, it's that he might show, and it's a continuous thing that happens in our life. It's making the showing forth on open display for all to see and that no one can miss it. It's so obvious. It goes on to say that he will take a personal interest in making something very evident. So when God is saying that in the ages to come, I'm going to show, that means he's going to take a personal interest to make it very conspicuous, to make it very obvious of what he's doing in the earth. And guess what? Guess who he's doing it through and to? You and me. Turn to your neighbor and say, God wants to make his way evident to you. Put up that last, uh, there's, a, there's one more little line there. Such displaying then is always done with high 
personal involvement and sense of advantage. That sounds to me like progressing, advancing, experiencing promotion, and our highest expectations being fulfilled. Because I've got the advantage. Why? Because God said that in this age, He will show the riches of His grace. Now, if there's one thing that we've all learned from Brother Jerry, it's that you can take, anytime you read the word grace, most often you can take that word grace and substitute the word favor. God wants to show very conspicuously, openly, and continually the riches of His favor to us that are in Christ Jesus. And He's going to make it very obvious, very compelling, very open, and your life will be an open display of the favor that God says He's going to show. That's what this verse is saying. <laughs> when I would, uh, the one thing I do, not there's many things, but one thing I miss, many things I miss, one thing is being up in that plane with the man of God. And you knew when to talk, you knew not when to talk. And you'd see him pull out his notebook and begin to scratch Notes, as the Lord began to speak to him, the presence of God would fill us like a sanctuary in the sky. And I remember one time where he was, he was talkative and I, and I wanted to share something with him that I was going through. And so I began to share this thing with him and, and uh, you know, it was, it, it, was, uh, it was a tough circumstance and people were coming against me and it was money that could be lost and, and this and that. And I shared that with him and probably five minutes of story. And he just sat there and he was patient and listened. And then I stopped and he looked at me and said, yeah, but you have favor. I said, I've got favor. I've got, I've got favor. I, I, didn't, I didn't even know what favor was till I came here. I just thought it was some little cliche phrase that people coined. I'm blessed and highly favored. How are you doing today? Too blessed to be depressed. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I didn't even know what it was. And then what helped me is I would get up and do, go to all these churches with him. Now, I don't know how many churches Brother Joe's been with over 43 years with Dr. Savell. My guess is I've been between 200 and 250 churches. And I would get up there and I, I would do these promos with the, the Favor of God book. And on the back side of the favor of God, it's got all the things that favor will do for you. It'll change rules and regulations. It's, it's favor in land, especially real estate. And favor, you know, where there were other people that were even more qualified. And, and But the favor of God, you know, pushed you to the front. There's a lot of things. As I began to, as I began to do this, all this stuff, the favor of God got in me. And then I went back and began to realize over the course of my life, how God showed himself in my life as conspicuous, as evident of the riches of his favor that was on my life. And people call it luck or coincidence or different things like that. Well, I got a, 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 a basketball scholarship, a full ride basketball scholarship and they never saw me play. <laughs> they never saw me play. I went up there to watch a game 
They didn't even see me shoot, nothing. And uh, I go after the coach said, what did you think? I said, oh, I loved it. You know, they were running and gunning. That's why I call it running and gunning. And what do you think you could, you could come here and play? I said, yes, sir, I, I'd love to. Well, here, sign right here. A full ride. At that time, it was $8,000 a year. That's cheap nowadays. I think it's doubled or tripled since then. But $32,000, full scholarship. They never saw me play. That is a favor. That is God showing himself through Eric, making it evident and undeniable that his hand was on my life. Amen. And that's what he'll do for you. Amen. And if you'll go back and look, that's what he's already done for you. You just may not have known what that was at the time. Yeah. That's good, Eric. Favor. So God told Nikki back in 2017, wasn't it? I think it was 2017, we were sitting in the Southwest Believers Convention. At that time, we just believed God for a good seat. <laughs> oh, please, Lord, if I could just get down on the main floor. Lord, I'll know that you're real in my life. Don't tell me y'all don't throw out those fleeces. <laughs> if I could just get down on the main floor. So I, I'd say, come on, honey, let's just walk down here. We're going to give God a chance here. <laughs> give God a chance to work. And sure enough, we, had, we got favor, and they sat us down on the floor, like over in the minister's section. And the Lord spoke to Nikki and said, you are favorites. And, she, of course, she didn't really, she, she wrote it down in her Bible, and she didn't, she, I don't think you turned right away and told me that. But the, the speaker that was now up next was Dr. Jerry Savell. Well, two years later, we made a move by faith, left two homes in a business to move by faith without a, a conversation with Jerry Savell. We never had a conversation with him. And picked up and moved by faith. Come on, talk good then. So I studied the word favorite, and if you take that word I-T-E and you study it out, it, what it means is a native or an inhabitant of the land of what is, flows previous to it. I'm an inhabitant of favor. There's a guy, the, <laughs> there's a guy, he's trying to teach this other guy how to dance. And the dude is, the dude, you know, he's like, he's like, you know, you're going to a dance, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you things. And the guy goes, oh, no, no, man, I got this. I got this. And he starts going like this. And the guy slaps him. He slaps him, slaps him upside the face. Don't ever. Don't ever let me see that again. Don't, don't, you be, don't you be biting that lip. He said, he said, I want you to stay right here. Elbows in. This is where I want you to live. I want you to live right here. I, want you, I don't want to see any of that. No, I want you to live right here. Right here. Right here is where I want you to live. See, when I do this, when I live in a land of favor, I just stay right here. I let, I let God show himself. See, I don't need to be running all around showing myself. I don't need to be doing all that. But I stay right here. I stay in my lane. Y'all yeah, see how I did my head like that. Because I live in the land of favor. When I, when I try to get outside of that, then I'm doing the work. When God's promised, he'll do the work. Are you here? So in the ages to come, say, now's the time for God to show his favor. 
The Amplified says he did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing, surpassing riches of his free grace, his unmerited favor. So I've got limitless favor. I've got surpassing favor that will surpass any natural means that is in the earth. And that's what grace is. Grace is to take what is natural and take us beyond that. So God adds his super to our natural and we operate in the supernatural. And things happen. Amen. I was, uh, I mentioned we, we left our business in Michigan. I still have it. About 2000, I'm going to say 14 or 15, uh, I had worked with this company, and marketed this product. And we had about three or four stores of theirs. And we would go sell this product, and, and we did well with it. And the, there was a couple of the owners in surrounding areas that were beginning to see some of the, this product that we were selling, and they wanted to know why they were seeing it. And they, some of them were upset that they were seeing coupons. They didn't want it. They didn't sign up for any coupons, you know. So I get called in by the corporate office, of this company, and they are not happy. They send this long email. If you're going to send me an email, try to keep it in two paragraphs. <laughs> long email. And they're, they're really upset. So as I'm driving up there, it's about an hour to get there, I'm praying, Lord, I didn't do anything wrong here. Uh, we got signed contracts, all this. I'm asking right now for you to show yourself in this meeting to show the favor that you that you put in. I didn't, I didn't even know what favor was, but I, I knew what God, I need you to show up. Show up in this meeting. Well, we get there, and there's the national marketing director, which I didn't know he was going to be in there. And then there's these two marketing ladies. And we sit down, and they just start ripping into me. Well, this and this and that. Well, how could you and that? And so I sit there and listen. And then... It was my turn to talk. And when, right when I began to open my mouth, the tangible presence of the Lord came on me. And I began to feel. And so I began to say, you know, I don't really see it like that. And I began to explain to them why we do what we do and how it benefits all these people. And so I, I did about a you know, minute or two and, and went through my deal. And, and literally I could feel the presence of God. The national marketing director sitting right next to me, I get done, he goes... You know, I don't see this as being so bad. In fact, instead of just our three or four stores, literally this is what happened. Instead of just our three or four stores, I want to roll this program out with every store we have in the United States of America. <laughs> and so we started that process. And now we got over 100 stores that work with us on this, and millions of dollars, millions of dollars have come in sales because of that one, that one meeting, and in a split second, God turned the whole situation. Why? Because he showed himself evidently, conspicuously, openly, and what was the result of that? Money. Money. Money was the result. See, God can, God's favor on you can make you a millionaire with one idea, one concept. Hey, in a week, in a month, in a year, this is the day where things are accelerated. Yes, yes. Amen. And God is still El Shaddai. See, they only knew him as Elohim because he, he created things. He made spiritual laws. He made natural laws. He'll never violate his spiritual laws. But El Shaddai is one that can change natural laws. And watch this. Can speed up spiritual laws. Give and it shall be given unto you. Well, I want an accelerated version of given unto me. Three of you want the same thing. 
How many of you want to excel? How many givers do we have? Give, and it shall be given unto you. El Shaddai can take what's given unto you and accelerate it to make it evident that you couldn't have done this on your own, but that he showed himself mighty through you. That's what he can do. Are y'all, are y'all getting this? I, I need a little better amen section. Because I feel like I'm preaching better than y'all are saying this morning. All right. Thank you. Say this, I'm walking. I am a walking display of the goodness of God. I walk in unlimited favor. Well, if you're going to shout, you might as well shout good. So we, we make this move to Texas, but it wasn't until we, we go to this, look at this house that was for rent, to try to find a place to live here. And I like this one house. And, and so the realtor said, well, uh, that's already got a contract on it. I said, this is, this is our house. We want to see it. And so just in case, you know, and well, okay, but it's already got a contract on it. So we went to see the house. And it was a brand new build. And I don't think anybody had even, if they lived in there, it wasn't very long. And I said, we want this house. And the lady said, well, I'll call, you know, but this this got a contract on it, blah, blah, blah. She goes, if they haven't shown up here by 4 o'clock, then I'll call you. Guess what? (laughs) They did not show up. That's what the favor of God will do, the things that God has for you. It's for you. Isn't that right, Bishop Vic? Vic. Yes, sir. The things that God has for Vic, it's for Vic. It's for Vic. That's right. That's why you shouldn't spend your time getting jealous and envious of other Christians because God has a plan for you. The same God that's with Vic. The same God that's with Joseph. The same God that's with Terry. It's the same God that's with you. God is good. God loves me. God is faithful. God is with me. It's got to be a personal thing. It's got to be a personal thing. God is with me. Well, Moses wanted to know, Lord, I'm I'm not anybody, that Moses said. I'm not anybody. Well, who am I to go talk to Pharaoh? This is Moses' question to God. And do you know what God tells him? He says, it's like Brother Jerry says, yeah, but you have favor. God says, I will certainly be with you. Amen. That was his answer. Amen. He didn't say, well, what I need you to do is take a step back, dear Moses. We need you to go back to Bible school and study it out for eight years. And then you'll be ready. Yes. No, he says, I will be with you. With you. Yes, sir. Yeah, I will be with you. Jesus was born. They shall call him Emmanuel, which is what? God with us. It says about the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, it's it's to your advantage that I go because the Holy Spirit's coming and he will not leave you as orphans. He's with us. The Holy Spirit is with us. Say, he's with me. And so he said, it goes on to say, uh, In Exodus chapter 13, don't turn there for the sake of time. 
it says that the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud, by night in a pillar of fire, and he did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from the people. So it wasn't something that was, hey, see you later, hey. No, it was open and continuous. It wasn't a great mystery either. It was a cloud in the sky. It was very evident. It was a fire. Very evident. Let that sink in. So more conversation with Moses. Moses, Moses is still, Moses like a lot of us. You know, he wants the daily affirmation. Moses says, how do I know that I've found grace or favor in your sight? And the Lord says to him, I will do marvels such as not been done in the earth, nor in any nation, and all the people among whom you shall see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. He said, it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is going to do an awesome thing with you. He said, marvels and wonders. That's the age that we're living in. Where God shows himself to us and through us. It is an awesome thing that God will do through you. God has a plan. Say that. God has a plan. So Moses says, how do I find grace in your sight? How do I know? And here's what the Lord says to him again. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. How do I know that God has favored me? Because he, he has promised that his presence will go with you and he will give you rest. His presence will go with you and he will give you rest. It's the same presence that was with David when he said, I beat the lion, I beat the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of those. It was the same presence that was in the fire with the three Hebrew boys where they came out and they, didn't, they weren't burnt. They didn't even smell like smoke. It was the same presence that was with the Israelites when God's breath blew and the sea split and they went across on dry land. It's the same presence that is with you and I everywhere we go. And he said, and I will give you rest. When he says my presence will go with you, he's talking about I myself. It's face to face. I myself. I'm taking a personal interest. I'm taking a personal interest in your life, and I myself am going to go with you. I myself am going to go before the judge with you. I myself am going to go to the supermarket with you. I myself am going to go to work with you. I myself am going to go to the park with you. He's taking a personal interest in us. That's the surpassing riches of his favor through Jesus Christ. And he says, and I will give you rest. That word is not just, uh, doesn't just mean peace for your anguish that in, the, in the present or your perplexity of mind. It does mean that. But it's also talking about where he's taking you. I am taking you to a place of your habitation. And I want you to live right there. I want you to live right there in that place of habitation. That's it. That's it. That's, it. that's where you're going to find rest because that's where I am. And when you're in this place of habitation, not doing all this, not following <laughs> your own plan, but you're just doing what I've called you to do because I've got a plan that's good for your life. 
And because if you know that he is good, that he loves you, that he's with you, that he's faithful, and that he's greater, then you can trust in the plan that he has for your life. He's got a good plan. You say, well, I wish he would just show me the plan. Well, he's been trying to show you, but you're doing all this. You're doing all this. You're trying to help him. He don't need no help. Yes, sir. Come on, man. Come on. Help yourself by getting out of the way and just stay in the land that he's called you to dwell. Hey, you can even turn your head a little bit and let people know. Stay in the land that he's called you to dwell because he's favored you there. Well, if you believe that, give him a shout this morning. Well, he had a plan. He had a plan for those Israelites. And I've never seen this until... I was with Brother Jerry in Toronto, and he was talking about breakthrough. And some of you have heard me. I want to share the scripture. It says that the waters saw you, O God, Psalm 77. The waters saw you, talking about the Red Sea, and they were afraid. The depths also trembled. It goes on to say the earth trembled and shook. Watch this. Your way was in the sea. God's way, God's plan. Remember, he led them out. The Bible said he led them out that way so they wouldn't be tempted to go back. Now, these people are thinking, God brought us here to destruction. God brought us here to die. But this scripture says that his way was in the sea. Your path in the great waters. He may have a path for you that you can't see with your natural eye. Well, that's what you want. Because it says that he'll show himself evident. And that no man can get credit for the plans that he has for you because they're plans of good from him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I could go make my own way. But when I get to heaven, when you get to heaven... Jesus is going to say, Did you, were you obedient to do this? Were you obedient to do that? What was your motive behind this? Uh-huh. I had, had this plan laid out for you. Yes. Yes. It's a good plan. It says your footsteps were not known. The Passion Translation says it like this. Listen, your steps formed a highway through the seas with footprints on a pathway no one even knew was there. His steps. His steps. That he's laid out for you. He has a plan for you. From the foundation of the world. From the foundation of the world, Danny. Maestro, from the foundation of the world. He had a plan for your life. Before you were in the womb, (laughs) he knew you. So don't you think that we ought to just stick to that plan? (laughs) If he's going to show himself evident with the riches of his favor. And we read here when Moses said, how do I know I've got favor? He says, I'm going with you. God is with us. Yes, sir. Amen. He knows the age that we're living in. Yes. He, this wasn't just for when we get to heaven. He's with us right now. Amen. Church, it's our time in the earth. It's our time in the earth Amen. to show forth. First Peter said, show forth. Show forth. Amen. To show forth. In other words, I've got to get out of the way to let him show forth through me. I'll wrap it up with this. Actually, go ahead and stand with me, would you?
Ephesians chapter 2 is where we're reading from. And uh, if you skip on down to verse 10, it says, For we are God's own handiwork, His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew. Turn to somebody and say, You're His handiwork. You're His workmanship. Born anew that we may do those things which God predestined or planned beforehand. That we may do those things which God has planned before. He's got a plan for your life. You're not here by accident. I said you're not here by accident. For us taking paths which He prepared ahead of time. Just like the Israelites They walked in paths that they couldn't even see were there, but God knew where the path was. He had formed it through the sea. And that testimony, the parting of the Red Sea, the enemy drowning, that testimony would be a testimony that would be told to their kids, their kids' kids, their kids' kids' kids kids, to tell of the greatness of God throughout the generations. How does he do this? His presence. When you're favored, his presence goes with you. Say, I am favored. His presence goes with me. Watch this. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. When I carry his presence, I could walk into a to an establishment and the Bible says he sh- surrounds me with favor as with a shield. That means his presence is before me. His presence is behind me. His presence is all around me. Changing the atmosphere. Amen. Amen. Angels go before me, prepare the way. Taking paths which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them Watch this, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Another translation says, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance as our way of life. This is the way we live. This is the way we live. This is our way of life right here. Walking in the Surpassing riches of the favor of God. This is how we live. If you believe that, give him a shout this morning.